All right, good evening. I just wanted to give a quick uh, tutorial or explanation of exponents and radicals today. Um, <clears throat> I had some questions via email about nth roots, and I just wanted to uh, give a brief conceptual explanation as well as some examples. Um, so just getting back to exponentials, exponentials are some number a raised to some power uh, uh, c. And so this c is essentially the number of the a's uh, that are multiplied together, OK? Um, so if I, for example, just take 3 to the fifth, I have three fives, excuse me, five threes multiplied together. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and that results in some value, some number, some ultimate computational value, right? Um, so again, this exponent tells you how many of the bases are multiplied together. Um, radicals, nth radicals, on the other hand, if we have the nth root of some number b, that is essentially asking which number multiplied together n times is a. So it's, it's in a sense it's the uh, it's the exact opposite right of the other exponential that we have above which tells us how many a's to multiply together here we're given in a sense this final value b we're, we're given this value b and we're asked what number was multiplied together n times to get us that value. Okay, a quick example, something that I know you're familiar with perhaps, uh, is the second root. So we call this the square root often. Um, and it's often written like this, the square root of four. And that's just asking what number multiplied together two times gives us four. Well, we all know that one, it's two. Here we can do a slightly more complicated example. Uh, what number multiplied together three times gives us 27? Well, here, uh, a little bit of prime factorization comes in handy. Oftentimes, we break down this value into its prime factors. That means the numbers that you multiply together that are also prime that give you 27. Well, 27 is actually 3 times 3 times 3. That's its prime factorization. So you can see right away, what number multiplied together 3 times gives us 27? Clearly, it's 3, right? OK, so let me move on to some more complicated examples, some things that you, uh, the students were asking about. And these will go pretty fast now that we have the idea behind us, I hope. So we've got the square root of 6 times the square root of 30. And we were asked to just simplify this or evaluate this expression. So what is the number it turns into? Um, these sorts of things are uh, a little bit more complicated than what we've got above, just because there's multiple radicals together. But um, there's this nice rule of radicals or exponents that goes like this. If you have some number to the power b times some number also to the power b, that can be rewritten as the product of those two bases raised to the same power. So here we've got the square root of 6 times the square root of 30. It's the square root on both. So we'll just join both 6 and 30 underneath that square root. Remember that square roots are the one half power. So all we're doing is using this rule to accomplish this. And now we're going to go to the uh, going to go to the uh, evaluation of this problem using the prime factorization that we used before. 
six is two times three. So I'm gonna put the two here, and three here. 30 is two times 15, which is three times five. So here's our six and here's our 30. Now we can rearrange multiplication, right? So we've got square root of two times two times three times three times five. And in reverse of what we did before with the six and the 30 coming together under one radical, we can break this one radical into multiple ones, sort of as a small step. Usually in practice, you don't actually do this, but to join this with the explanation I gave before of radicals, this makes a lot of sense because this, this step here that I just did by breaking it apart, you know, up here, it joins the concept of what we were learning with m roots with the problem here. So what number multiplied two times together gives us four? Well, it's obviously two. We see a two multiplied together two times underneath there. And underneath this next square root, we've got two threes multiplied together. They're under the square roots. This is just a three. Square root of five has to stay there. There's only one number there if, unless we want to get into irrational numbers multiplied together. Um, so here, the evaluation, it's right there. Six root five, that's it. That's the evaluation. I'll start another problem here. If you need to slow it down, back on up. I'll do the same thing here. Square root of 54 over square root of six. Uh, there's another handy rule about uh, uh, radicals and exponents. If you've got a fraction of two numbers, a to the power of b divided by c to the power of b, that's no different. You can plug in any numbers except for c being zero. Um, you can plug in any numbers you want, um, and you'll get the same as doing a divided by b, excuse me, c raised to the b power. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do up here. This is the same as the square root of 54 over six, which I think we can maybe do, right? Without a calculator perhaps, 54 over six is nine. This is the square root of nine. And so this, then it's just the question, what number multiplied two times together gives us nine? That's three. That's the evaluation of this one. Next one, we're really gonna have to use our, our concepts from before. We've got the third root of 24 times the third root of 18. Okay, well, we'll bring together both radicals just like we've done in the previous examples. So this is the third root of 24 times 18. I'm not gonna multiply those together. We're just gonna break them apart into their prime factors like before. And we're gonna look for the same number multiplied together three times. And then whenever we see that, we're gonna bring it out front just like before. All right, so what 24 is two times 12. 12 is two times six, six is two times three. 18 is two times nine. So there's what's underneath the radical. And I can see right away, we've got three twos here and we've got three threes here all multiplied together and there's an extra two that will stay underneath the radical. Oops. So this is two, that's these three multiplied together coming out, times three, that's these threes coming out front, times the third root of two. Okay, this just comes back down to that, that idea. The third root is just asking what number multiplied three times together, do we have here? So we've got this, these twos, that's eight. What number multiplied three times together gives you eight? Two. 
And here, three times three times three, that's, let's see, three, nine, 27. One number multiplied three times together gives us 27, that's three. So the evaluation is just six times the third root of two. Okay. Um, and then we've got even harder ones, I suppose, where instead of giving, being given real numbers, we're, we're given variables, um, perhaps with real numbers. But these variables, x, r, t, these are just numbers. Okay, they, they're letters, yes, but they're really just representing numbers. And it's always the same number. Once you fix what x is, x doesn't change. It's the same thing. Okay, once you choose what r is, it is the same thing throughout. Wherever you see an x, it's the same number, x, whatever the first one was. If you see an r multiple times, the r is always the same number. So here's a few examples. Third root of x to the fourth plus the third root of 27x. We're going to do something just like before, but with not prime factorization, we're just going to use factorizations. Um, notice this x to the fourth. That is four x's multiplied together. So we'll just group three of them together. x cubed times x. Um, the third root of 27 x, well remember 27 is 3 cubed, so I'm going to write it like this. And then in just one more step, we're done. Do you see any numbers underneath here multiplied together three times? You see three x's multiplied together right here. How about this next radical? Do you see any numbers multiplied together three times? All right, three times? Well, yeah, it's three right here. So here we go. Let's bring those numbers out front. The x was multiplied together three times in the first radical. There was one x left over. We leave it in. There was a three multiplied together three times. There was only one x. So we leave the x in, bring the three out. Okay, when we see the same radical here, we can do a little simplification maybe if you want. You can factor that out. So we'll take uh, the third root of x out of both of these in the sum, and we'll leave it like x plus 3 times the third root of x. That's a simplification, I guess. It's To me, that seems like a little bit of a stretch to call that simplified, but maybe it requires fewer computational points. I don't know. Last problem was even more complicated, but it's the same problem, just rinsing and repeating, right? We've got 4 times the square root of 18r times t cubed plus 2, square root of 32 times r cubed times t to the fifth. Okay. Let's just break this down into groups of things multiplied together two times, because this is the square root. This is the square root. Okay. Um, here we go. Four times the square root of well, 18 is 2 times 9, so it's 2 times 3 squared. We see already there's something multiplied together 2 times. Times r times t squared times t. Just break that product of three things into 2 and 1. And that gives us a couple things that can be brought out front of that radical. Plus, the next one, 2 times the square root of... 32. 32 is 16 times 2, but 16 is 4 squared times r squared times r times oof, t squared times t squared times t. So I'm going to write this 
t to the fourth times t. Squeeze it in by the end of the screen there. So we see a four multiplied together two times, an r multiplied together two times underneath here. And here we see a t squared multiplied together two times. So we see things that can come out front. On the left side, we've got four times three times t times the square root of everything left over, two r t plus two times four times r times t squared times the square root of everything that's left over, two r t. Uh, we see maybe some simplifications here. We can, again, factor out the two rt, since that's a factor of both of these, right there, right there. Um, there's a t that's in both of these. There's a four that's in front of both of these. And we're left with, inside, three t. Those are the only things we did not factor out on the left-hand side of the addition sign. And on the right-hand side, 2r. So 3t plus 2r times 4t times the square root of 2rt. And that's all the questions that were asked about this stuff. But um, real briefly, I want to just show you a shortcut for all of this. Because radicals, especially nth roots uh, and others like them, they're just powers, they're, they're exponential powers that are fractions. So let me just go to this problem, when we just did, um, and look at this right hand side. Okay. Um, and we'll see how this can actually be done in fewer steps. Two times the square root of 32, which I'm going to write as its prime factorization. Two times two, which is four, times two is eight, times two is 16, times two is 32. So what is that? Two, four, eight, 16, 32, two to the fifth, right? Times r cubed times t to the fifth. I'm just gonna rewrite this as a fractional power. Again, this radical is a fractional power. So I'm just gonna write it like that. The inside doesn't change, two to the fifth, r cubed, t to the fifth. And the square root is the one half power. Whenever you have an nth root of something, that's just that something to the fractional one over n power. So the square root is just the one over two power. Third roots are one over three powers. And then we're gonna use the distribution of powers rule. We've got a product here of numbers all raised to a power. So we're just gonna distribute this power to each of them. And we're gonna multiply the powers together. So two times two to the five times one half, that's five halves, times r to the three times one half, that's three halves, times t to the five halves. And then we're just gonna simplify these powers down, sort of like mixed numbers. Five halves is really two plus one half, right? Three halves is really just one plus a half. So we're going to use that to help us rewrite this very quickly. Two to the five halves is two to the second times two to the one half. Remember when exponents are multiply together like this, you add the exponents if the bases are the same. So that's where we're adding together to get this. Times t squared times t to the one half. Again, we're adding these exponents together when the bases are the same. It's another rule that we have, right? Lots of rules. And then lastly, r to the first times r to the one half. And so this gives us right away our final result that we had up above. 
we've got 2 times 4, which is 8, times t squared, times r to the first, times the square root, or the 1 half power, of 2 r t. 2 r t. And that's the left, sorry, the right hand side from up above, right? 8 r t squared times the square root of 2 r t. Right there. So that's just another way of doing it, is uh, thinking about these radicals as roots. I hope that helps. That was a lot of examples really fast, but I, you can watch this recording as many times as you need. Uh, this is Professor Love, and uh, I hope you have a great day.